Let's talk money. Hello and welcome to another edition of Let's Talk Money with me, Surabhi Upadhyay. Now you would have seen and heard those headlines. Gold crossing 70,000, then 71,000, then 72,000 and 73,000 plus at last count in Indian terms, in terms of Indian prices in INR. Indeed, the gold rush is underway against the backdrop of geopolitical concerns building across West Asia and expectations of rate cuts from the US Federal Reserve. The yellow metal has gained over 15% in 2024 alone and we're talking just about less than four months of the year. Investor interest is rising. To understand the outlook on gold going forward and more importantly to understand how we should incorporate gold in our portfolios, well, we have uh, the experts uh, lined up today. We'll, of course, take your queries on the yellow metal as well. Vishal Dhawan of Plan Ahead Wealth Advisors and Chirag Mehta of Quantum AMC are with me on the show today. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much and welcome to this sparkling golden edition of Let's Talk Money. Uh, Vishal, great to have you in the studios. It's a pleasure being here. Uh, Looks like Diwali's come early. <laughs> Looks like that. And Chirag, uh, you know, I'm glad you could join us at least, uh, you know, remotely for a bit. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is that time, this is that sort of a rally which is making everybody sit up and take notice. Those who have gold are feeling fantastic. And those who don't, those who didn't buy enough are having a major FOMO feeling, right? When you see the very sharp pace of, uh, of rise. So I want to first get your sense on, you know, what you think of the market, what are you thinking of the investing trends? And then we will get to the Q&A from our, from our viewers as well. So Chirag, you take it away because, you know, you are managing uh, a lot of the funds that are there sitting in, in the gold funds at Quantum AMC. What's the sense? You know, where does this rally come from? And, and can it sustain, given that it has been at such a pace? Sure, Surabhi. Uh, whenever we have seen a rally in gold, usually you need to see uh, or find some uh, strong underlying economic underpinnings to it. And this time is no different, right? Uh, if you look at gold, uh, we have already seen that the headwinds go off. Uh, we were seeing earlier interest rates moving up, quantitative tightening from the central banks. So liquidity was being sucked out and cost of money was going up. So those were the headwinds for gold. Now there is more clarity in terms of inflation coming down and therefore interest rates headed lower. Uh, we are seeing that, you know, gold is getting repriced. And probably central banks are in a flux. Like, for example, Fed has announced that they will look at three rate cuts this year. Uh, now they are in a situation, having been announced that, uh, we are finding ourselves in a slightly more stickier inflation kind of regime, uh, which may be a conundrum for the Fed in terms of what they should do next. So if you see, uh, markets are, have started repricing in interest rate cut announcements. Earlier, they were expecting five rate cuts. Now they have come to terms with the Fed at three rate cuts, and probably it could decline even further. Though uh, lesser rate cuts means a headwind for gold, but here sure. we are talking about the credibility of the Fed, because earlier, if you recall, Fed was saying inflation, inflation is transitory, I mean, post-COVID, that was. Right. Uh, then they that, you know, inflation is, uh, uh, we have kind of victory, had a victory over inflation, and now probably inflation may remain stickier to the, uh, what they expect. So overall, I think these kind of uh, uh, nuances are leading the gold rally where the central banks are in a flux in terms of what to do, and adding yeah. to that uncertainty is probability of an economic slowdown or a financial accident happening because interest rates are very high. And if you look at even this government payment of debt or interest payments on that debt is kind of unsustainable. So I think the sure. uh, Fed needs to lower rates, but probably, you know, they might not be able to do so. And that, that conundrum is needing the smart money moving into gold markets. Mm. And that is what is leading. And adding to that is the geopolitical conflicts that we are seeing. So well, all absolutely. All, it's a great, yeah with a level for gold to be in. Absolutely. Of course, the weekend developments have only sort of, uh, you know, uh, made people really sit up and take notice about what happens from here on in terms of all the uncertainty. Now, Vishal, uh, come in. Uh, traditionally, of course, we Indians have loved our gold. But my question is about serious gold investing from a financial standpoint. Uh, have you seen the propensity to go in for financial products that give you an exposure to gold? What have your clients been, been doing? Have they been loading up? And have people managed to take advantage of this rally? Yeah, so I think there's clearly been a sort of good understanding over the last few years that 
the consumption part of gold needs to be separated from the investment part. Mm. And I think gradually as financialization of gold has taken place, mm. I think people have figured that out. Mm. Uh, I don't think it's, it's prevalent across the board, but I think the more options you have, mm -hmm. I think the more likely that there's something that you like, mm. which is outside that jewelry that you wore. Yeah. So I think that's clearly happening. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the way we are seeing it is asset allocations clearly become an important piece. Mm -hmm. And investors are saying that, you know, between 5 to 15% of gold exposure is probably a good number for us to work with. Mm. And I think one of the things people have figured out over the years is that the rupee tends to depreciate against the dollar. Mm. And gold is a very natural place where there is a hedge available yeah. for Indian investors. Mm -hmm. And we've seen over the last few years people spending a lot more money overseas. Mm. Uh, they travel overseas, they have kids who are going for education overseas, so they're looking for dollar protection as well. Mm. So I think this shift has started to happen where people are starting to allocate. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, when any allocation point, uh, when you see a 15% rally in three, four months, mm. uh, you wish you had more. In fact, you start <laughs> to ask yourself saying even is 10% enough or is 15% mm. enough? But I think it's important to keep in mind that this is insurance you're buying on your portfolio. Yeah. Uh, it's there for the geopolitical risk. It's there for, you know, interest rate movements which happen in the opposite direction of what you were expecting, uh, mm. as Chirag was mentioning. Mm. And of course, the central banks are also buying. Yeah. So I think there is sort of this realization that has come through. The question has been how much should we have in our portfolio and I mean how not to get carried away by price moves which can look very, very dramatic as they're doing right now. Uh, Chirag, just to you know, put in context, uh, retail participation uh, in gold ETFs, gold ETFs, gold fund of funds, gold mutual funds, because you know, this avenue opened up for investors a couple of years ago when you know, uh, people like Vishal were explaining to us that we should not consider jewellery as an investment but look at financial products which give us that exposure. So just tell us what the data says in terms of trends. And in the last couple of months, uh, you know, what have you been noticing with respect to your funds? So we have seen a steady rise for gold ETFs, uh, especially you know, whenever we see a rally in gold markets and gold buying becomes essential for uh, portfolios, we have seen good flows coming into gold ETFs. And this, uh, again, we have seen the same trend unfold this time as well. So earlier last year or so, uh, when there was a uh, retail participation in a lull, we were seeing a lot of flows coming because everyone thought that gold is an essential from a multi-asset portfolio and many funds being launched from that uh, in, in the multi-asset arena, we saw a lot of flows from multi-asset funds into gold ETFs. And now we have seen incrementally more gold ETF flows coming in. Last three months, for example, 660 crores in January, uh, 1,000 crores plus in February and about 375 crores in, in March. Uh, April is also looking much better, although it's just half a month. We are seeing that momentum continue of more flows coming into gold, despite the price increases that we have seen. So I think in, uh, in individual investors are very under allocated to gold from a portfolio perspective. And I think they are looking at these kind of realizations that, you know, gold is an essential part of the portfolio and therefore they are coming in. Uh, so we think that about 10 to 15 percent allocation is ideal from a portfolio perspective, and there are hard numbers to prove that. Because at that 10 to 15 percent, you kind of augment your overall portfolio returns and reduce the risk significantly at that level. Beyond that 15 percent mark, you start giving up return benefit of your portfolio for that yeah. added risk reduction that it, it kind of helps. So I think you know, you know, so Chirag, you know, allow me, uh, just uh, Chirag, allow me to quickly move to some questions as well because they are very connected to what you're saying. Uh, I think the whole point is, what do you do now? If you have gold in your portfolio, you're fine. You're sitting pretty, looking at those gains. But what should those do who don't have adequate exposure? So I'll quickly get to those questions. Uh, the first query is coming in from Abhay Sharma. He has written in to us, and he is saying, "Can I invest in gold now uh, for a five-year horizon?" given the current geopolitical concerns, can I look at uh, gold ETFs? So Vishal, I think th this is what I'm talking about, right? People right. are seeing the price rise and realizing, oh, hey, I don't have gold in my portfolio. So what do you do? Is, is this still uh, you know, uh, feasible to buy? So I think you need to go back to the allocation question ultimately and say that you know, if I'm sort of a very defensive investor, maybe I want 15% gold. Mm -hmm. If I'm very aggressive, maybe I want five or 10. Mm -hmm. If you're not there yet, you need to build it, but be careful about building it out. I think it's very tempting because of recency biases that are very natural to us mm -hmm. to say, hey, you know, let me build that from zero to 10 or one to 10 in one shot. Mm -hmm. I think you need to be careful. You need to stagger, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two piece of advice for Abhay is that very, very clearly, a five-year investment horizon for gold is probably not good enough. Mm -hmm. 
I think we need to start looking at gold as a growth asset which delivers outcomes over much longer periods of time. Mm. I think we've got it for equity. Mm. We've understood it for real estate. I think for gold, we still tend to take a slightly longer term view. You just said it's and insurance for the portfolio, it but it's insurance. moving like a growth asset Right, as exactly, of now. exactly. So, you know, it's a big debate, right? Is it defensive yeah. or growth? Yeah. Yeah. And I think the way to look at it is uh, buy gradually, uh, buy 5 10%, go up to that level. Mm. But clearly have a 7 to 10-year investment horizon at least. Mm. Don't just stop at 5. Okay, fair enough. So you can start buying now. Staggered is the way to go and widen your time horizon. That's what the advice is. I have a related question which is coming in from Ruchit. Ruchit is again saying he has no exposure to gold currently. Should he begin by investing in uh, gold ETFs? So since he's asking specifically about ETFs, Chirag, I'll, I'll open this with you. Uh, I guess you probably might be in agreement with, with what Vishal says. Would, would staggered be the way to go considering we're looking at these all-time high prices? And then uh, tell us, why should one look at gold ETFs over a lot of the other options? Sure. Uh, so, Sulvi, for like any other asset, gold is also an asset that has volatility associated with it. There will be cycles, up cycle and down cycle. So, probably it's best to average over rather than taking a call on prices. So, I think uh, staggered, I agree with uh, Vishal that, you know, staggered is the way to go. And gold ETFs, I think they were one of the best financial innovations that we have seen because it allows you at the retail level buying 0.01 grams of gold at a price where tons and tons of gold get exchanged between a gold producer and a gold bullion bank. So that is the efficiency that the gold ETFs bring to the table from a very wholesale level to a retail level. And uh, given that efficiency, you don't have to worry about purity, you don't have to worry about liquidity, you don't have to worry about storage, uh, insurance is co uh, comprehensive with these gold ETFs. So all in all, it's a great product to be in because we buy gold for a rainy day. And uh, you know, uh, if you want to liquidate for any emergency or for any necessary thing, then probably gold ETFs can provide you that liquidity virtually 24 by seven uh, because if you are in a gold fund, you can liquidate at any point in time in a T plus two, you will have money in your bank account. So I think uh, it's a great way to invest uh, uh, because, you know, it has physical gold backing to it. At the same time, it is very, very price efficient. So I think, uh, and the most important advantage that differentiates gold ETFs, the liquidity that it provides at fair prices at any point in time. Okay, so that is Chirag, obviously batting for gold ETFs and, and gold funds. Fair, fair enough, Chirag. Uh, you know, after the break, we'll actually do a deeper analysis of some of the other options as well. But before we let you go, Chirag, just leave us with an outlook. I know these things are tough to predict and you already uh, outlined a lot of the factors, geopolitics at play. We don't know what's happening with rate cards, central banks are buying. But all things equal, given the pace of this rally for maybe the next one year, I mean, are you still expecting more upsides? or perhaps some consolidation, you know, what's, uh, you know, from a market perspective, what's your call? I think uh, there are strong underpinnings to this, which is from an economic standpoint. Uh, so I think this rally is here to stay. Uh, what will kind of accentuate is what the errors that we see from central banks around the world, whether they are errors or they kind of course correct, that will determine how we think gold prices going forward. Uh, but overall, downsides from these levels will be limited. There is a geopolitical premium built into prices. If geopolitics kind of corrects itself, then probably, you know, uh, you may see sub some, some subsiding of that premium. But there will be some or the other element of the premium given. Middle East have become a bedrock of geopolitics uh, today. And uh, there could be many surprises on the way. So there will be an element of geopolitical premium out there. Uh, longer term, we are very, very bullish. So if, if there is any dips in gold prices, but that's an opportunity given the dips would be limited given, uh, you know, uh, the inflation and trajectory that we see unfolding. And right. there could be possibly uh, in terms of uh, central banks not being able to do what they have conveyed us to do. So uh, I think we are in a longer term, much better situation when it comes to gold. Got it. All right, uh, Chirag, thank you very much. Uh, we will let you go at this point in time. Thanks for joining in and giving us some perspective. We will take that break, but after the break, um, you know, Vishal, I want to explore this point about the right products. Now, we all, you know, know that we need to have exposure to gold. What is the best route uh, for that? That's what we'll discuss after the break. So keep it with us. More of your questions will be answered on the other side. Let's talk money.